Okay, we're going to segue into demonstration for basal vertebral nerve ablation with uh, Dr. Pratik Gandhi. Dr. Gandhi, are you ready back there? Uh, I'm ready. Great. Uh, we have the model. Uh, look, uh, observe no lead, no radiation. <laughs> so this is the radiation free version of basal vertebral nerve ablation. Yeah, Take it away. We don't have to deal with uh, some of the cold cadavers or <laughs> warming them up and hammering into hard bone. Um, so sort of the key to this procedure, um, and I know all the talk was there, is really getting your anatomy upright and uh, you know, straightforward going into it. So the first thing we do, you know, we're gonna do an L4 um, BVN ablation here. The first thing we wanna do is make sure our end plate, especially our superior end plate is uh, sharp. So we'll add some caudal cranial tilt and make sure it's sharp. We've already done it here on this image. Um, then the next thing you wanna do is oblique over um, to the side we're doing. We'll access the right pedicle um, just for this purpose. So we'll oblique over to the right here um, and really get a good pedicle view where the facet, you know, the facet there is right about 50% of the superior end plate. Um, so we'll essentially mark down um, right down the eye of that pedicle there at L4. Where? Picture. When it works. A little technical. <laughs> when I come and do the other side. I might need to slide that. Let's see. There we go. We have a metal metal bar under the table. Some interference. So our access point is gonna be to numb down to the ostium here of the pedicle, right down the middle here. Picture Picture. There you go. So this is where our, our target point would be towards the center of this. Um, you have two options for can, uh, needle introducers here. You have one that has a bevel tip and one that has a diamond tip. Um, everyone's, everyone has their own preference, so this is the bevel tip. It gives you a little bit more directionality, uh, ability to carve through bone if you need to make uh, more moves up or down. Um, but then there's also the diamond tip, which we classically see for pedicle access as well. Um, I usually use the, the bevel tip just to give me more directionality when I'm doing the case. Um, so I'll numb down to the ostium here. In this case, uh, you know, with the model, we're not, we're not gonna numb down. So on this, on, for this procedure, the, the early access and early setup is really important. Um, you wanna make sure that you have a good angle off midline because you, you wanna stay posterior. That's the big difference between kyphoplasty and um, vertebral, uh, basal vertebral nerve ablation is you wanna make sure that your, your angle off of midline is good enough that you, the, the needle will turn and the j stylet will turn, which we'll see um, in the future steps. So this is sort of a good starting point here, um, probably a little low, so we'll go here. So my angle off midline is, is, is pretty significant. It's about you know, 35, 30 degrees. Um, so I'll kind of bring this needle down to the bone. So we're on os there. You can see kind of where my trajectory is. Um, so we'll mallet here um, just to get some good purchase. All right. And then the option here is continuing an oblique or switching over to AP where you can actually see you cross midline. Um, this is the transpedicular approach. So we'll, we'll jump to AP since I have some good purchase here. Um, so the goal of this, and you know, uh, Dr. Beal and others following me when they teach vertebral augmentation will mention, do not violate the medial border of the pedicle unless you're in the, uh, into the vertebral body. So the, that still applies to this procedure as well. Um, so on AP, we're sort of mid-pedicle here. Um, and we can take a lateral, but I know that I'm pretty superficial. So I'm still gonna kind of drive this down a little bit more. 
So the other option you have here, and the reason I sort of use this bevel tip here, is because you can actually rotate this thing out, and if you feel like you're getting too close to the medial border, you can carve away from that medial border using this, uh, this stylet, actually. So when you feel a sort of a texture change or you're just not sure about the depth, you can take a lateral there um, and see sort of your trajectory. So we're kind of banging on the door of that medial border. We're a little, uh, sorry, the, the posterior border of the vertebral body. We're a little shy of it and we're a little high. Um, so with this tip, we can make some adjustments to get it to drop down a little bit. Um, so I'll actually you know, pull the needle and cannula assembly here uh, superiorly to drive the needle downwards. And so you can see that just a slight correction kind of trajecting it downwards. We're in the posterior wall, so I'm not concerned about the medial border anymore. So I'm gonna switch back to my normal view here um, and continue to drive this in. And so here you can see there's a couple scallops on the actual image. So there's a distal scallop. Um, and a proximal scallop there. Um, th these are markers for us. So if your angle isn't, isn't more than 30, 30 degrees or it's less than 30 degrees, you can stop short at that distal scallop to make sure that your uh, J curve actually curves onto the BVN. If you feel like your angle is good, more than 35 degrees, you can actually go a little bit deeper um, because you have the ability to get that uh, J-style to turn and uh, lance that BVN. So I'm gonna go a little bit deeper because I feel like my angle is, is pretty good. And so I'd probably stop there. In this case, you know, being posterior is okay. Um, so I'll end up doing a tool exchange here. I'll take the cannula out um, and then introduce this J-style here. So this whole assembly comes together and we sort of feed this thing in. sits there and then, so this wheel here is almost like a, it's a nut, if you wanna call it that. It basically blocks this from being malleted. So if you were to try to mallet this down, it's not gonna go. So we bring this gear wheel up um, all the way here and we'll take a shot there. And so on the imaging, you can see which direction this j style is going. The one direct, the new thing with this j style is that it does have directionality. So when you turn it upwards, the image will show you that, that the j style or tip of the j style is pointing up or you can turn it the other way if you want directionality and when you take a picture, you can see it kind of curved down. In our case, we don't need to make that many big adjustments, so we'll come down just slightly south, but we'll keep this um, the way it is and we'll start malleting this down. So we're kind of making some slow moves here. So, you know, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. There's a nitinol um, within the J-Stylet that needs to heat up. That's gonna get it to turn um, in the direction that we want it to. So I'll take some small mallets there. And so on the imaging, you'll see that the, the J style is pointing down. We don't want it to keep dropping, so I'll actually use its curve to turn it upwards um, and continue to mallet in there. And so you can see that it's not making a drastic change going uh, south. I'm gonna keep going here. And now this J style is pointing out towards essentially us and getting across midline, it's turning back on itself. So we know that the J style that's made its turn, it's within 30 to 50% of the posterior wall, 30 to 50% down from the superior end plate. So that's the ideal location for the lumbar vertebral body. I'll give it a couple more taps just to kind of see. And so now it's fully turned back on itself and that's what that J is showing, that little shadow dot on the end of it. We'll go back to AP here and just see if we've gotten across. And so we're clearly across at this point um, by a lot. So once you lance the BVN, if the patient is under MAC anesthesia, um, occasionally you'll actually see the muscle spasm in front of you. Um, good sign that you've uh, you know, cut across that trunk of the BVN. Um, so at this point, I don't need to mallet any further. So I'll actually take this J-style out and I'll show you what this J-style looks like here. So you can see it almost has a sort of shovel tip to get it to turn. It's like, a, it's like almost looks like a ski. 
So that's how this J-stylet turns. So you can imagine if your angle is too, uh, too shallow, it's gonna be a lot harder for this thing to turn versus if your angle is this way, it's gonna turn much easier. And then once we've taken out the J-stylet, our cannula assembly stays in and we basically insert the probe here. And so the probe here, essentially you want your spinous process to be between the, the dark and light component of the probe. So right about there, should do it, I think. A little bit deeper, a little more. So right around there, and at this point you would essentially, you know, with this model, you, it's an ablation, but you would bring this gear wheel back down just to expose those probes, uh, the ends of the probe here. Um, on the model, we don't need to. And so it does retract a little bit, we'll push it back in. Push it back in, a little bit more here. So right around there, um, that's probably the lesion site. We'll take a lateral and take a look at where we ended up. And so you can see the light and dark component of the probe there. That's gonna be the lesion site. With this new simulator, it shows where the targeted lesion would be. Um, so you can see you know, the proximity of that targeted lesion to my trajectory. And in this case, we do a seven minute lesion. If you felt for whatever reason, um, yeah, you can show the lesion. There you go. So that's the lesion site for a targeted lesion. So you can see there's a little wiggle room um, about where that lesion will take place. Um, if you felt like you're a little bit high or a little bit low, you could change the lesion to a 15 minute lesion. Um, and that you can see that it expands the target zone or lesion site by quite a bit. So you know, it's a little bit bigger if you felt like your targeting was a little off. Um, but that's essentially the procedure. You know, as long as you follow the guidelines and um, you know, not, do not breach the medial border of the pedicle until you're in the posterior wall um, and get good angles, good imaging, um, and kind of take it slow and, and the rest of the procedure is pretty smooth. The, the device actually allows it to, to be a smooth, smooth case. Could you please show the AP of the targeted region? Right here. Any questions? Yeah, did you go, did you hear that? Um, the request was to show the AP view of that. Yeah. So Is there any our... way to get the uh, little gray dot off of it right in the center? Yeah. So you know you're in the center. There's a little linkage between these two. This is a darker and lighter portion of the bipolar. There's a little linkage, a little dot right there, and that's where you want it to, in an ideal AP, have that right over the spinous process. So you make sure you're right smack in the center. Yeah, and, and the lesion is gonna happen at the um, proximal portion of that dark, uh, dark dot or oval, if you wanna call it that. So occasionally when you're doing live cases, you'll see the probe, and your, the tip of your probe may end up being really off target, but it's gonna actually lesion uh, you know, proximal to that. So at the end, it may still be a good lesion target despite where the final position is. Any questions? Okay, so at this point, very well done, Dr. Gandhi, that was outstanding. So at this point, what we're going to do is, I'll turn it back over to Dr. Lee, who's going to talk about DRG stimulation. We'll go from that to the lab to demonstrate the DRG.